Oh, man, 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 man. Here we are. Yes, things look a little bit different. Y'all already know it's the holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to you and yours, man. Do not let our team letting us down yet again in a big game in front of everybody in the world to see. Get you down. Enjoy your time with your family. Let's go ahead and get into my reaction, my recap. Cowboys versus the Miami Dolphins. This game boils down to a couple of very simple things. First of all, I got to say, this was a very good football game. This is a football fan and watching football. This was a very good football game. Second thing, Tony Pollard. We can let him walk next year, y'all. We can let Tony Pollard walk. I usually am not the person to try to say that we need to take dudes off the field and that type of thing. I did start calling for Michael Gallup, start getting less snaps, less looks because he was a problem. Tony Pollard lacks field awareness. You see it time after time after time. For some reason, he loves to run the ball directly into the backs of his offensive linemen. He don't look for the holes to hit. He don't look for the correct gaps. He's not running with the type of patience and pace that made him the type of weapon that made the Cowboys even consider giving him that franchise tag and giving him a chance to really be the lead back for the team. There was a situation in the game that was pivotal that was the play right before the fumble happened on, on the exchange. And I, I'm not sure exactly who to blame on that exchange. I want to say it's Lepke because Lepke never really even, he never, he never, he never grasped the ball. He, he never took the ball from Dak. Dak put it there and Lepke's hands was just tight the whole time. Like the ball, like Dak was supposed to like bury the ball into the pocket. Lepke never actually took the ball from Dak. And the ball just fumbled. But before we even got there, why is Tony Pollard? Look at this graph. Somebody tagged me on X. Look at this graph. Why is Tony Pollard not running to the pylon? Why is he not running to the pylon? Why do you cut back? And not only do you cut back, you don't cut back and keep your shoulders square. You cut back and then give the defender your back in a position that's almost impossible for you to get the forward body lean. He's running scared right now, y'all. Tony Pollard is running scared. That stood out to me a lot. I felt like there's a lot of meat being left on the bone with a lot of our running plays. The offensive line isn't blocking that bad. The running backs are not hitting the correct gaps, bro. They're not hitting the correct holes. Tony Pollard is not seeing the field correctly right now. He's not seeing the field correctly. Outside of that, Chuma Edoga. This was the Chuma Edoga game. Chuma Edoga let Bradley Chubb run by time after time after time. Scott Free, a freeway express right to Dak Prescott, bro, his, his blind side. Chuma Edoga let this continuously happen, bro. And I understand Tyron Smith was a late scratch. I don't think anybody was expecting Chuma Edoga to play, including Chuma Edoga. As you can tell, it don't look like he was even expecting to play. But guess what? He did play. And he was a problem the whole game. There was times in the game where the entire line was blocking one direction. He was blocking another. I don't know if he didn't get the play call. He didn't remember what the play call was. He didn't understand what his, his responsibility was within the play. But it was very blatant at times in the game. At, at vital times. That he was just letting Bradley Chubb run scot-free and completely. You don't. How do you let one of the best pass rushers in the league run scot-free to your quarterback multiple times in the game? Tuma Edoga stood out a lot in this game. As far as Dak Prescott, I think he played a, actually. I, I think he played a pretty clean game. He made a lot of good throws. He extended the play a few times. Um, I do. I do feel like maybe in the first quarter there was a couple of plays where, if you see the receiver, sometimes you gotta just you gotta let that ball go. I do feel like there was a couple of times in the first quarter where he might have been trying to protect from getting a turnover a little bit too much. I do, I do feel like there was a couple, but I need to go back and look at the film and see exactly what it was he was seeing. Because you know when you're watching the TV, the, the, you can't really see what the quarterback is seeing unless they show you the replay that's showing you that vantage point. So it's hard to really tell. But so we have to go back and look at the All-22 because that felt like a couple of times in the first quarter. There, might, there may have been times where he double-hitched the ball 
and that second hitch was him like, nah, I don't want to throw this in that spot because it could be putting the ball in danger, which I can appreciate in a game like this. As you can see, this game truly came down to leaving points on the board when we fumbled the ball on the one yard line. That was a bad breaker. I felt like that completely changed the entire way that game was played because the Cowboys go up and put seven points on the board right there. I feel like the Dolphins go into a mode where they're not as committed to the run and keeping the run as much of a part of the game plan as they did, even though they kind of did get a little pass happy. They did keep running the ball. They did keep running the ball, and they ran the ball very well when they needed to, which was in the fourth quarter. And something that needs to be discussed is the discipline of the team. The discipline of the team is an issue. The, 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 we, you cannot win a Super Bowl getting 10, 12, 15 penalties a game. Even if they're not 10, 12 penalties, you're getting four or five back-breaking, bonehead penalties. Michael Parsons seems like he's starting to lose a little bit of his composure. Um, I think he's letting the referees and the... I feel like he's letting a lot of the stuff that's not happening within the lines of the game kind of affect him a little bit. To what degree, I couldn't tell you, but it does absolutely seem like he's starting to let some of the things that's going on outside of the game and outside of his responsibilities on the field to affect him. He did come off the ball a few times during the game that was actually noticeable, but he made some plays. Even in the run game, he came off the ball. They had him lined up in the middle of the field, and he came off the ball, went under a blocker, and was able to chase down a run from behind. And this is why everyone said that they want Michael Parsons playing that position a little bit more because it gives him space to impact the game more. And Michael himself doesn't want to play that role. And he's made that very clear that he doesn't want to play that role. And I honestly feel like it has a lot to do with, bro, pass rushers get paid the big bucks. And if he's trying to hold out playing that position too much because he wants to get paid as a pass rusher, bro, get that man his money right now so that way he can just play whatever we need him to do, bro. If that's what this is about, is being labeled as a pass rusher so that way you're getting paid like a pass rusher, please, Give him his money right now so that way we can just put him where we need to put him. Because Damone Clark, there was a couple times in the game, the offense were picking on him. Middle of the field, they were going to the middle of the field a lot on a lot of different plays. Um, the defense is just, if they're not making plays on defense, the defense is just way, they're, they're just playing way too soft. And I understand you're playing a team like Miami with a ton of speed all over the field, so you can't play them too aggressively as far as your DBs and your coverage. You can't because you're going to get burned. Tyree Hill and Jalen Waddle are just too fast for that. But um, we've seen this trend now where defense, they're, they're playing like this bend but don't break style, and then they're depending on turnovers to make them a great defense. We need a defense that's able to keep teams stagnant to where they're not consistently able to move the ball and consistently able to flip the field and consistently putting the offensive position to where – outside of the first position of the game and like one more position in the first half, they're starting like in terrible field position within the five yard line. And that's gonna kill a drive more time than that. It's very rare that you see teams march up and down the field 95 yards for a scoring drive. Very, very rare. So my confidence level, y'all, be honest, man. I'm not gonna make this video too long. It's Christmas, like I said, happy holidays, but my confidence level is coming down a little bit. I'm about at a six now at this point. Um, I'm not worried about the division. I'm not worried about any extra accolades. It's just about let's get into the playoffs, see what happens, y'all. Let's get into the playoffs, see what happens. Um, I don't think that there was anything noteworthy from this game, anything that should be headline worthy, anything to where you can just point at somebody outside of the people I named. Tony Pollard, Chuma Idoga, those are the main guys I'm looking at offensively. Tony Pollard and Chuma Idoga are a problem. Tyler Smith has a penalty problem right now. He's getting caught with a lot of flags right now. Um, but besides that, the defense, Dan Quinn, I'm looking at you. We, we, we got to start looking at Dan Quinn. My confidence has dropped a lot. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Be realistic with you. Uh, but as always, you know I always in these videos. How about them Cowboys, man? <sighs> Take it away, Pastor. We still them boys. Calling me, texting me, paging me, asking me, am I still in ball? Y'all use the check on me. Listen, 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 listen. I'm still in boys. Hey! Woo! Hey! I'm still in boys.